Why are you making yourself available to the media? You guys have been pretty much behind closed doors, stayed quiet the whole time, and now for the first time you're saying, okay, we want to talk. We want to talk because there's only one side being talked about. And there's a whole other side that doesn't get said. The media never talks about the good things you do. They don't talk about all the outreach you do. They just want to say the negative. And we feel like that people need to understand because this is not just about our church, but about every church and synagogue in America, this investigation. And so we feel like people need to know about that. Considering the reputation, the perception that the American public has about TV evangelists, and it's not always good, wouldn't you want to clear up your name? If you're members of those six churches that Senator Grassley has petitioned, wouldn't you want to come forward and say, look, we're not the group that you believe we are, and we're going to prove it? Yeah, we'd like to do that, but we're going to do it in a method that doesn't compromise the First Amendment rights. We'd love for the IRS to come in and settle it for, for everybody today, but we're not going to compromise those rights. It's a principal issue. So what's next for Kenneth Copeland Ministries in this fight against Senator Grassley? Uh, we'll just wait to see what comes next from them. You know, we're, what's the balls in their court, basically. So we're going to see what they're going to do next. Have you talked to the other uh, preachers involved in this? I've talked to Creflo Dollar. And his response? They feel the same way, that it's a First Amendment right issue. And you know, I haven't spoken to any of the others. You know, a former employee, a volunteer who ushered at uh, Kenneth's 70th birthday party uh, witnessed a check, nearly $2 million that was given to Kenneth Copeland as a personal gift, and it was given from the multiple ministries of Creflo Dollar. Now, Dollar admitted that the financial gift was given on CBS's The Early Show. That's our network morning show. What did Kenneth Copeland do with the money? Well, he paid taxes on it first thing and the rest of it they I don't know what they've done with it I mean I guess they put it in the bank but here's an opportunity you know the position was this from Creflo and this is why he rec he talked to other ministers about doing what they did it was a chance to honor somebody a man of God who's done great works in the kingdom and they wanted to honor them before they died typically people get honored after they died and the Bible says give honor where honor is due. And they wanted to bless him because there was a group of ministries and churches whose lives had been changed from the message that's been taught. And so rather than wait till they died to honor him, they wanted to honor him while they're alive. Your faith preaches the prosperity doctrine. Can you explain the prosperity doctrine? Sure. Um, the prosperity label comes from, you know, people think that we just talk about money. But prosperity is far more than money because if you've got money in the bank but yet you're dying of cancer would you say you're prosperous if you have money in the bank but yet your marriage is in shambles would you say you're prosperous prosperity biblical prosperity is living a life through God's word where you have health in your family life you have health in your relationships you have health in your body you have health in your finances and the reason that we are to be blessed in this earth, you know, you, the Bible says you serve God and all these things will be added to you. It's not for you. It's not just so you can have the nice house and have the nice car or, you know, have money in your account. Uh, that, that's part of it, but, you know, it's about being a blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. If I don't have money, how can I feed the hungry? I'm going to be the hungry. If I don't have money, how do I close somebody that doesn't have clothes? How can I pay off somebody's house? How can I, you know, I mean, how do you do these things? But how much money, money do you need? How much is, is too much? How much is too much? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that number would be. I, I think most people in America realize that, yes, you do need to have some money and some power and some influence to make changes. But, but there's, again, there's a huge difference between a $500,000 home and a $5 million home. You can accomplish those goals with a $500,000 home. You can accomplish those goals by flying coach 
on a normal airplane. You can't accomplish. They can't accomplish their goals flying coats on an airplane. You don't think so? No. They could not do the schedule they do flying the airlines. I know Have many. You? I know many preachers who fly coach, who do not have private jets, who do not have large homes, and they do a wealth of good in their community and around the nation. Tell me why there's 10,000 corporate jets out there, and are you saying that ministries should not use the same tool that the people out there in the world use to get the message out? I mean, we see, we don't believe in the fact that you should be poor, right? We believe that God has created all these things in order to get his message out. I understand. But corporate jets can be argued that they're paid with, paid with, or paid for, excuse me, with profits. And it can be argued that jets taken by preachers are sometimes paid for by donations. Is that right? By donations that the donors wanted them to have that tool to use. That's, I mean, to me, that's a relevant point. We didn't go out and So you think when someone arms? digs in their pocket to give money to Kenneth Copeland Ministries, they want to give Kenneth Copeland a jet rather than to feed the poor? They gave the money towards that jet to buy it. Yes, I do believe that. <laughs> That's what they did. Their contributions specifically to that Citation 10 is what paid for it. So, yes, that was their intention, to give them to fly that jet to preach the gospel around the world. Okay, so then it's not a, a legal issue, isn't it a moral issue? Is it morally ethical to, to stand up there and say, look, I need money for a jet, I need money for a home? No, it's not a moral issue, it's a tool. We believe it's a tool that can get the job done faster, quicker, more efficient than flying coats on the airlines. Have you watched the news lately where they'll cancel a thousand flights in a day? Can you imagine there's an auditorium there with 10,000, 15,000 people who are just sitting there twiddling their thumbs because your brother Copeland and Sister Gloria didn't show up today because all the flights were canceled? We can't do that. I mean, there's too much at stake here. Do you believe Senator Grassley is conducting a witch hunt against the Pentecostal Church? Um, you know, it would be a, I think a good analogy would be, okay, I'm going to come into your house. I'm a law enforcement officer. I'm going to come into your house because your neighbor next door has said that you're a bad person. That neighbor hates your guts, and he went to the police and said he's a bad person. So I'm going to come in your house. Now, I don't have any kind of proof or any showing that you've done anything wrong, but I'm going to go room to room, and I'm going to search through all your files. I want to see if you're breaking the law, so whether or not I need to know if I need to punish you. Well, that's what's happening here. They're saying, you know, we don't have anything. In fact, we don't have any right, but we're going to come in there and we want to look all around just to see if you're doing something wrong. That's not America. That's not what the Constitution provides. And so there's a method. If they need to come in your house, they have to get a warrant. Well, if they want to come in this church, it needs to be through the process of the IRS. That's the governing body that's been put in place for that. Okay. Thank you, John. I appreciate your time.